Hey everyone, this is Ross and in today's video we are going to be harvesting our garlic and talking a little bit about curing it because that's really the next step after we harvest. And you can see here these are not garlic plants but instead these are shallots that we had to harvest early, actually even some leeks because what's been happening here in the Pennsylvania area, at least on my property, is that we've been getting a lot of rot and just tons of rain has been coming in this spring. Um, all throughout May for the most part. I think last night it rained almost three inches. <laughs> and then today it's supposed to rain like another inch and a half. So we're just getting pounded with rain, it seems like, at certain times of the year, especially now. And uh, I just wanna make sure I'm coming in here and protecting my garlic because I don't want it to rot. We have a lot of it planted throughout the property. We've been harvesting scapes, so with our hard neck garlics, we've already done that. Essentially where we just take off the tops here. You can see that the flower head is now missing. Here's what a scape looks like on some of these that are a bit slower to do that. And what we're essentially looking at when deciding on harvesting garlic is one, the rain, always considering rot because if we get rot on these garlic plants it's just going to be very difficult to store them and that's really the whole goal with garlic is to have garlic all winter time until next spring when you can then harvest them again um, so for me and what i've read in ron engelin's book how to grow great garlic is that he recommends harvesting garlic when you've got about six healthy leaves so these bottom leaves here are now starting to brown. And it's kind of really just up to you. It's kind of just like a guessing game in a way. I mean, there's no sort of right or wrong reason, I think. It really depends on your, your climate and what's happening at that current year. So for me, I just pulled this one up. It wasn't looking too good. And as I pulled it, actually, you can see that a lot of this top stuff here in fact, this is going to probably affect the storage quality. Had really ripped away from the, the bulb of garlic. And this is actually a pretty nice sized bulb. I'm happy to see this, but for every leaf represents a husk around the bulb. So that's really helps store it. And that's what Ron in his book really mentioned was that you need to have at least six leaves because each leaf is going to represent a husk around the bulb so that's really what we're focusing on now because I'm really concerned with rot and I should be concerned even though that this is in really well draining soil this is a really great soil mix here I don't even have it in the native clay um, like I've had some of my shallots and sh some of my leeks but I think what we want to do is come in here and very carefully observe these because we are going to get rain even later today. I don't want these things to rot. Um, you can also see down in here, this guy I don't think ever really formed correctly. And that's what this looks like. And you can see it's 100% rotted. Um, the way you can tell, I guess, if it's rotted is if the stem here is really soft. Here's another one that's definitely rotted. So it's upsetting to see, but this is reality. And this doesn't even look like garlic to me, but you can tell it's definitely rotted. So I'm gonna come in here, really make a good evaluation on some of these and make a good decision. You can see these look a lot worse down in here. I don't exactly know why that is, but these are showing many more um, brown papery leaves and actually they have a lot less green leaves as well which is kind of sad and it, i think what had happened was and what i tried to do this year was i wanted to really play around with the planting date of my garlic and these are different varieties they're different sized bowl or different sized cloves when we planted them but i really wanted to play around with this and see if i could figure out what the best planting date was here in my climate not just go by the books, not just go by, you know, every online source, but really get it down. And over here, we actually planted these August 15th. This section here, or maybe even August 1st, if I'm recalling correctly. This I think is August 15th. This is September 1st. That next section is September 15th, which would be 
sort of normal-ish or getting towards more normal. And then we have October 1st, which these guys look great. And this is probably the best recommended time. Um, and then we have actually back in here, October 15th. And these look the absolute best. They have the most leaves. Uh, they're probably showing the least amount of rot and they're just looking way better. So uh, it's hard to say though, because this is a, these are not hard necks. These are a different variety here. This is called Chinese pink, this variety of garlic. So we're gonna have to sort of evaluate that. Sorry for the camera there, guys. But that's what we're, we're doing today, is just coming around. I think we're gonna harvest all the garlic. Like I said, we're gonna bundle all this up and then we're going to put them in the organza bags and let them cure. What you can do is actually just let them cure outside for a day or two. You could give them a nice wash, get all that dirt off and then let them sit outside. But the issue with that is if you let them sit here, maybe on the, the patio or something, is that it's gonna rain later today. So uh, I can't really do that. So it needs to get them out of the ground, whatever it is I'm gonna harvest and uh, that's it. So. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this one. We'll come at you guys with uh, later updates on the garlic to show you guys how it's curing and then maybe even the finished product. We did a lot of this actually last year. And maybe I'll do a nice video on just the entire harvest of the garlic itself. So, all right, guys, stay tuned. See you for tomorrow's video. Take care, guys.